Alright, alright, today we're gonna talk about mods and add-ons. I already made a video a while ago on the most popular add-ons, you can check it out first if you want to, because today is a little bit different. Today we are talking about my favorite add-ons. Pretty much every single one that after trying it the first time, I cannot live without it anymore. So I'm gonna cover a little bit of everything I'm using in no particular order, and with some luck you're gonna discover new things or stuff you might want to try yourself. As usual, everything you need and every single link is gonna be in the video description. And if you're new to modding your game and using add-on, you should definitely check quickly this video to know how to get started first. Okay, let's go. I want to start with Crook's Faction Identification, because to me it's a perfect example of what this video is going to be about. Simple, elegant, very useful add-ons. Personally, I don't really like playing with the central dot, I find it makes the game a little bit too easy, but it's the main way to identify other stalkers and to see if they're allies or enemies. And here's a situation I find myself into way too often. Wait, is it a bandit? He looks a lot like a bandit. I guess we... I guess I'll wait to see if he shoots at me. Take your time, bro. Take all the time you need. Okay, that was a bandit. So, to avoid that type of issues, this add-on is gonna add the patch, the rank and the name of the stalker you're looking at at the bottom left of your screen. If you've never interacted with them before, it's only gonna show you the faction patch, which is the most important information anyways. Depending on the distance from the stalker you're looking at, and if you have like a scope or binoculars, it might take a while to identify him, which makes the whole thing pretty realistic. I really really enjoy this add-on, especially when using HD models, because they can get a little bit confusing sometimes. Cozy Campfires is a very simple add-on that adds health regeneration when you sit around campfires. So basically one more reason to enjoy some rest with some guitar tunes. Persistent weather might sound not that interesting, but I actually really dislike when the weather is changing when I load a game or when I change areas, so this add-on simply fixes this, and I actually really enjoy it. No more weather changing randomly and stuff like this. Okay, now let's talk about three mods that basically go hand-to-hand -to -hand together. Dynamic Mutants, Dynamic Nocturnal Mutants, and Dynamic Stalker Guards. Okay, first, Dynamic Mutants is gonna completely rebalance the amount of mutants and their locations on the map to make them much more impactful and immersive. They actually did a really good job at making the zone feel much more dangerous and alive in a way. There's also all kinds of new mutants that are actually pretty well balanced and thought out, and there's even some allies animals like dogs, it's pretty nice. And be careful, because now every hole in the ground, every cave, every underground is gonna be like probably a mutant slayer, and you're gonna have to be really careful if you want to visit them. Another really nice feature is that the difficulty is gonna slowly ramp up after creating a new game. You have the first 15 in-game days to get better gear, because after that, high-tier mutants are gonna start roaming the zone. Oh, and I almost forgot, you can completely change all the settings and customize the add-on to your liking if you want to. Okay, so now Dynamic Nocturnal Mutants adds up on that by making the nights actually really really dangerous when a ton of high tier mutants come out at night, so as soon as the sun is starting to get done, you better go back to a safe place. And to wrap everything up, the Dynamic Stalker Guards adds guards during the day and during the night, to defend like the most common bases, because there's gonna be like a lot of attacks of mutants against them. It's actually a nice defense minigame in the game pretty much. If that wasn't the case already, these three mods make the zone a very dangerous and unwelcoming place, and every time you leave base, you better make sure you're well equipped to fight whatever's coming at you. Okay, three small really nice add-ons, the quick melee attack that lets you knife pretty much everything using a shortcut, the break in one hit, that lets you break pretty much anything in one hit, which is really really nice. And the PDA to previous weapon. It simply puts back your main weapon in your hands when you hide your PDA. It actually doesn't sound like much, but like it's this little quality of life mods that make a big difference. Pre blowout murder, that actually adds a murder of crow that swipes the map one minute before any emission. Bonus points if you use this and disable all the radio and siren warnings. 
and add to this the add-on apocalyptic blowout overhaul to make the emissions even more scary and epic. Camera reanimation project to make all your movements feel more realistic when you jump, crouch, etc. You can look at the difference here. Even the handling of the weapons and aiming feels much more real in a way. Okay, now let's talk about the inventory because there's a ton of little cool things you can change and modify there. Let's start with the very cool and popular made icons that's gonna change all the vanilla icons with much neater and cleaner ones. And you have a ton of different options when you're installing the add-on to customize everything and show more info on the icon. It's actually really, really nice. Add to this the sorting plus add-on that lets you organize your inventory through categories. So it's gonna order all the items for you. And you have already a very, very clean, much more readable inventory. Add to this the ability to make favorites that are gonna stay in your inventory and not move to your stash when you move everything. And you have an absolutely amazing add-on. As usual, all the customization is done through the mod configuration menu. Wait, did I talk about MCM? I think I forgot. It's probably the first add-on you should install. It's the most important one. It's gonna add a new menu in the main menu when you can access a ton of options for all the compatible add-ons. So yeah, every time you want to change something, 99% of the time, it's gonna be there. Okay, let's go back to our inventory add-ons. Next, shift, quick, transfer. That one is an absolute godsend. Very simple, you keep shift press and all the items you're gonna hover, they're gonna be transferred in your stash or in your inventory. Everybody that played Rust knows very well this feature. If you just want to transfer specific items and not use the move all button, it's absolutely perfect for this. It makes everything so much easier. Hunger, thirst and sleep bar, as the name indicates, adds a hunger, thirst and sleep bar to your inventory. It's actually really useful to be able to track precisely and immediately that information. Oh, and you probably noticed that nothing happened when I was eating. That's because I'm not using food, drinks and meds animation. As the title handy gets again, it adds food, drinks and meds animation when you use them. It's actually a nice little feature. Okay, now let's quickly talk about tooltips. You know all that information that opens when you hover any items in your inventory. I really enjoy the cost tooltip that adds the base price of any item you're looking. It's actually useful when you're ordering your inventory to know what to keep and what to throw away. And notice how slow it is for the game to show you tooltips. That's because I'm not using instant tooltips. That's gonna show you tooltips instantly, which makes things much easier and faster. Following the same idea of making more information available easily, the parts tooltips is very useful to immediately check the parts of your weapon or your armor to see in what state they are. No need to go into details and scroll down to have that information now, which is very nice. And let me finish that inventory section with disassemble all and combine all, which as their name states, lets you disassemble and combine items all at the same time, which makes inventory management much easier and faster. Overall, I really recommend using Nitpicker's add-on pack that includes a lot of the add-ons I just talked about and a lot more too. This pack is really good at fixing a lot of little frustrating things in the game and is an overall big, big quality of life improvement. I tend to play with no HUDs nowadays, but when I used them, Seed HUD was actually really, really nice. For people who like to have as much as information as you can in a very compact and clear way, that's absolutely perfect. And as many other add-ons, there's a ton of configuration options while you install it. Okay, and let me finish this video with something for everybody that loves hunting artifacts. The Artifact Signature Locator add-on adds a new device that you can purchase at the scientist. It's pretty expensive and you have to be friendly with them, but it's gonna show you from a distance every artifact that's sitting in an anomaly. So no more running around in dangerous anomalies for nothing. I really really like the idea, but thinking about it, it might make the game a little bit too easy. Maybe the price should be higher. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video, and as you can see, I just covered a very very small part of all the add-ons available. If you think I missed some very important ones, or one that you actually really really love, please share them. I might make a part 2 of this video. There's still a lot of things I could cover. Okay, take care guys, and see you later.